Hey there guys, welcome back and welcome to episode D of the A to Z of Obscure Trading Card Games. Today we're going to be taking a look at the game Dark Age. Made by Friedlander Publishing Group and first appearing in July of 1996, Dark Age was intended to be three different sets of different standalone games that could all be merged together to play. Unfortunately, only the first set was ever produced due to lack of popularity. That set was called Feudal Lords. It appeared in both 65 card semi-randomized starter decks and 10 pack boosters. The booster packs would contain 6 commons, 3 uncommons and either a rare or a chase card. And the starter decks contained some fixed cards so they'd always be in there but then they were semi-randomized after that so you could get different commons, different uncommons, different rares just so they were all ready to play out of the box. All we know about the second set for Dark Age was that it was going to be called The Brood and it was going to have 225 cards. It was supposed to show up later in 1996, but it never materialised. Feudal Lords is set in kind of a Mad Max style environment, where most of the world is now a wasteland and you have opposing factions of survivors who are fighting against each other for the last few resources. It's unknown whether The Brood would have followed this very closely or would have just had some small ties so that you could play the games together. I do want to mention the oddities of the chase cards within Feudal Lords. Within the 231 card set, there were five chase cards, and they were all types of artifact. Artifacts were a separate game mechanic, and they would start in play uh, rather than being shuffled into your deck. What is interesting is that all of the artifacts in the set were chase cards. There were only these five artifacts, so it basically meant that an entire game mechanic was at a higher level of rarity than regular rare. So for the majority of casual players who were just going to grab a starter deck and a couple of boosters, they were never going to see these artifacts. They were just not going to know at all what the mechanic of the game was, which is a very weird decision to me. In addition to the Feudal Lord set, there were two promo cards released for the game, and both are definitely worth talking about. The first was a character card named Clergy Anne, and this one is worth talking about because this has what is possibly the strangest distribution method for a promo card I've ever heard of. This promo card was only released in booster packs of an expansion to a different CCG produced by the same company. If you were a Feudal Lords player and you wanted to obtain the Clergy Anne card, the only way you could get it for yourself without buying it on a single market was to start opening packs of the Necropolis Park expansion to the Guardian CCG. It was kind of a gutsy move on behalf of the designers, but I really can't imagine that it was popular with the players at the time. And the second promo card is notable because of how little information there is on it. I've been searching the web for days looking into this thing, and I found no information about how it was released, I can't find a photo of it, and I can't be 100% certain of the card's name. The only thing that I do know for certain is that it was an artifact card, similar to the chase cards within the set. Most of the fan sites and checklists that I'm seeing online list it as being called Efficiency Bot, but Scry Collectibles Official Guide list it as being called Energy Bot, and with no available photos, it's not something I can confirm right now, uh, if anyone knows or has any resources, definitely send them in to me, because I found nothing. So, I've probably talked enough about the game for now. Let's open up some starter decks and jump in and see how it plays. Alright, so we have here two decks, so let's open up and see what we get inside. Um, the two decks, the packaging is exactly the same. I'm not sure if they are randomised in some way. Hopefully they are, so that we're not playing with exactly the same deck. But there weren't you know, multiple variants released, so there's not much we can do. Alright, so we have four different dice. There's... Okay, there's just seem to be one to six. It's regular in different colours. Huh. Alright, so they're just, they're just regular dice, so you don't need it. We have a small, what I'm guessing is the rule book here. Yeah, it's showing us how to... Different types of cards. Alright, we'll look through that a bit more once we get into it. Alright, so this is what the front of the cards look like. Hmm. Um, do they have a collector number on? I am not sure. Uh, I don't know if they have a collector number or rarity actually on the card. Okay, so it doesn't look like they have an actual rarity on the card from what I can see, but looking closer, that's not actually the backs of the cards, that's what I'm guessing is the sticker sheet, because I read that a sticker sheet comes in the starter deck, so this is going to be kind of interesting to see what's in there. 
I know the rarities of the cards, you have your standard common, uncommon, rare. You then have, uh, I believe it's extra rare and ultra rare, or it's very rare and ultra rare. Uh, then there's an X rarity, which is fixed cards from the starter decks. And then there are five chase cards from the set. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, Alright, so, right, so that is the back of the card. That's that's just a sticker of the back of the cards. Alright. Okay. So I'll take a quick flick through. Uh, so I guess this is the name of the card. Ravage, Hidden Stores. Alright. That's a different type of card, a weapon. Okay. Uh, Cardstock's interesting on these. It sounds thick. Yeah, and the, the front, if you feel the front, it doesn't feel like a regular trading card. It feels just like actual card. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Very hard to kind of describe that over video. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Right, doing a quick flick through of these so we can just make sure, well, hopefully they're not completely different, and then we'll look at them a bit more. Alright. And there's the dice. I'm sure we'll find out exactly what we need the dice for. And we'll jump into the second. The uh, second stop back, that is. Same four dice, same rule book, and okay, so it's a different card on the front, so should mean that they are different decks, or at least somewhat different. Awkward to get into. <laughs> again. So looks like we're getting some of the same cards. But I don't know if we're getting all of the same. It doesn't look like we are. I'm sure there's at least a couple I've seen in here that I didn't see as we're going through the first one, but we'll see a bit better as we actually sit down to play. And then we have a full booster box to open to see some other different cards from it too. Alright, so that's basically a quick look at what a start it looks like, and now let's sit down and see if we can figure out how to play. Right, set up. Each player chooses one leader and one controlled location from your available cards and place them on the table in front of you. Alright, so I'll, I'm, let's just take the first leader and the first location we find from our decks, I guess. The locations are the sideways ones. Place three tokens on your controlled location card, one on each of the three locations. Alright, sure. Open up the munchkin stuff. Good job our kitchen just has like a ton of different card game resources all over the place. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep those off to the side I guess, I have no idea if we're going to need them again. Alright, uh, place five Plus one markers next to your leader. See page 38 for use. Shuffle your remaining cards in your stockpile. Each stockpile must contain at least 55 cards. Have no more than four of any one card. Leaders, controlled locations, and artifact cards are not placed in your stockpile. Oh, okay, so it's someone with leadership on the bottom. All right. So we have to pull out all of the leaders? I guess so. Oh, maybe the ones that are actually leaders are the ones that have two... Oh, that's a supply, and that's got two. Alright, so... Oh, what, yeah, here. Mine what? says War Knight Leader on the side. Oh, so Survivalist Leader, Patient Leader. Okay, so you have to actually look to see which one's called a leader. City Leader. Alright, so going with that, we're going with the, the... The leader is the person with both, with both uh, leadership roles and some stats. We might be wrong, but this doesn't really tell us that well. If playing only with starter decks, class designations on skills, weapons, supplies, and instants are ignored. This is really confusing. 
If you can work this one out, then maybe you should leave this game. Okay. Combat is real complicated. There's also close combat. So there's two different types of combat? Yeah. Alright, let's read about winning. If at the end of any player's turn, a player has accumulated 10 or more victory points as indicated by tokens on his leader card, that player wins the game. If two or more players have 10 or more victory points at the end of a turn, player with the highest total wins. So, it doesn't say anything about not doing any phases on the first turn of the game. Okay. So... First phase is stockpile. You discard and draw. So you can discard up to two, and then you draw that number plus one. Okay. So I'm just gonna draw one. Oh good, there were about ten rules pages on equipping. Yeah. Skill stat is the one right under control, and then weapon stat is underneath that. So I can only equip skills of two or weapons of one. Okay, and he has a life total at the top, which is the number three. Yeah. And then there are many, many other numbers on the bottom. Yes. So what? what is the... where's the weapon number that matches his weapon? Is it that, so is it I, that leadership? I think I misread it. It's... a character is limited in the number of weapon and skill cards it can receive, so he can only have one weapon. Okay, and he could have two skills. Yeah. It just, It wouldn't matter what they were. Right. I just, I don't know how we win yet. I don't know how we get victory points. I'm not sure. Do we fight each other? Yes, we do fight each other. Oh. I don't know if that gives us victory points or not, though. Something must give us victory points. Um. Alright, well, let's just try to figure combat out, since I have a dude now. Alright, so... This, this is the summary of combat. It's a mess. So we have pre-combat. I'm going to announce that I want to attack. Go nuts. Uh, attacking player creates and pays for his attack pool from characters in his active area. So I can attack using either the standard method or the lone attacker method. I, I don't know what the difference is. But I don't know what... Are there, like, better rules on combat that I'm missing? No, but I found another round of combat called the Distance Fire Round. Yeah, that's... that's the next round. And then there's the Close Combat Round 1, and Close Combat Round 2, and Support in Combat, and the End of Combat. Oh, here we go! Oh, Send in Competence, the Standard Method. To add a character to your combat pool, you must pay leadership equal to that character's control minus your leader's attack send if you're the attacking player, or defense send if you're the defending player. Other cards may also affect the final leadership cost of sending characters into combat. The minimum cost of sending a character is 1. If you're using the standard method, you can add as many characters as you want. What page are you on? Uh, 19. So, like, four pages before the combat rules. <laughs> And then we have the resource phase. There's another phase after... Where's that then? Because after... I remember mean, going after combat phase, I go straight to how to win Dark Age. Um, it's at the front. I'm on page 13. Um, but the resource phase is... You make a hand check. So if you have less than your leader's hand number, minimum okay. hand size, which is three... You draw up to that. And then you can choose and to re-roll your dice. I will re-roll my dice. Okay. Oof. So you can have one skill and two weapons. Yeah. Uh, but you can't equip the same um, weapon twice. I think pre-combat rules have more... In the, in this game, pre-combat has more steps than Magic's entire combat phase. <laughs> there are seven steps to pre-combat. So how many... Alright, so hang on. So we've got, what, seven... Six in distance-wise, there's 13. 
12 in close combat round 1, so that's 25. 1 and then repeat steps 5 through 12. So that's what, 34. So there are 38 steps to combat. Yay! And it's still not clear <laughs> what you do. This feels like one of those games where you have to have someone who already knows how to play it. Or you need to, like, look up other guides. It just, it feels like games, is, maybe it's just games at this time, don't really understand a starter kit. Yeah. But like, it, it feels like there should be a, a much more simplified version of the rules for a starter kit, so that you can learn the basics of how to play, and then have some sort of, like, an advanced rule book or some sort of next step to get going because this is just way too much to try and figure out on your own for the first time. You're so ready to give up on this. Yeah, I am. This is... Like, the the whole point of us trying to do, like, a play the game section in these videos is to see can you take the game out the box, sit down and get into it. And I can't. Like, this is... There's way... It's way too complicated to just take the game out of the box and sit down and try and play. It's, it's like, so close to being playable. Like, I'm sure all of the rules work, which I... is more than can be said for other games we've played. It's just <laughs> figuring out what they are. Yeah, like, I, I think if there was a simplified combat system that right. you could... Just learn, like, an easier version of combat for out of the starter deck. Like, we could probably make it work. Yeah, like, even if just all of the... If they just said everything that came in the starter deck, they just all had, like, one number in each of the things, so it was a lot simpler, or they just only did one bit of combat. I think I'm, I think I'm calling this one on whether it's playable just easily out the box. It, it isn't. Okay. That's I'll give so... you that it's not easily playable. Yeah. I think it's got potential. Okay, so that didn't go as well as I'd hoped. After trying that out, I did try to look up some of the rules online, and there have been a lot of erratas for it, and there are more simplified rules posted online, so if you are actually looking to get this to play, there are the resources out there which can make it a lot simpler for you. However, as I've said before, within this series, I want to be trying to judge the game purely on whether you can play it by just opening the starter deck and using the resources that are fully in there, rather than having to go elsewhere to try and play it. And for this one, it was very difficult and we couldn't get there. But let's move on from that now and let's open up a complete booster box of Feudal Lords. Alright, so we have a full booster box here to look through. So according to this book I've got, there are commons, uncommons and rares. It also claims there are very rares and ultra rares, but then doesn't actually list any of them in the checklist. Uh, but there are five chase cards, which are the artifacts, so they should be easy enough to see. And there are the X cards, which are the ones that are fixed and only come in the starter decks. Uh, so there are 231 cards total in the set. Uh, yeah, let's start having a look through those. Uh, I have no idea what the rares will be. We have no way of knowing to open the box, and if anyone's wondering, that is Scry's Collectible Card Game Checklist and Price Guide 2nd Edition from 2003. <laughs> so, nice and up to date. Alright. Oh, God. <laughs> this is a well Oh, yeah. The booster box also sits at an angle. I don't know why that is. It's just slanted. It's cool. Fancy. That's gonna be a nightmare for stores though. To both store and display. Here's a cool locking box though. Yeah. yeah Dark Age, an FPG game system. 36 limited edition booster packs per box. What is going on there? Oh, it's because each side of the box is separated. Okay. Interesting. That seems unnecessary. Do all the packs have the same artwork? Yeah. Alright. So what does it say? This booster pack contains 10 cards which can be added to your Dark Age deck. <laughs> An internet address that ends in at AOL.com. <laughs> I bet that still works. Suggested retail. 279 US. Alright. 
sure why not. Yeah. So we have an instant. She's the one that was in my scry guide as the example card. I don't know if that means she's rare or not. That one was in the start of it. I hear good things. I think that was in the starter deck too. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. Actually, let's look up if I... Because if I hear good things was the rare, maybe that means the rare comes at the end. Or maybe there's just always a victory card at the end. Oh, God, that would be irritating. So what was it called? I hear good I, things. Oh, I hear good things is a rare. Okay. Okay, so maybe just the rare comes at the end. The last card in this one is Sour Victory. Sour Victory is indeed a rare. So, looks like the rare's at the end of the pack. We worked it out. This one's an instant. You play when one of your locations is sacked for the first time and your opponent gets one less VP than normal. Do we want to try to figure out the rest of the pack? How many commons and uncommons? Sure, you take the book and you do that. Alright. <laughs> Actually, it might say in the book how many commons and uncommons put back. Alright, while Laura is working that out, we'll look at some more rare cards. I'm guessing that Ravage must be at least... Oh, I did that completely off camera. I'm guessing that Ravage must be a common card, because we've seen that a lot of times. Right, we have a weapon, light armor. It costs four supply. It has a weird A and a shield. That's probably some sort of class thing. On a task roll of 3+, plus, this character blocks one hit in CC. If you fail the roll, discard the armor. I don't know what that means. <laughs> in turn, because we couldn't get through combat. Like there was too much combat. All right. Armor had rolls. I did read that far. Armor had rolls, okay. We've got Sucks to be you, <laughs> which is a victory card, which has an A. Collect one VP for sacking a location that's already been sacked at least one time in addition to the VPs that you would normally collect. I'm not even sure how many rares are actually in this set. I'm hoping we hit at least one chase card so I can see what they look like. Uh, skill, speed. Make a task roll at the start of each round of CC. So that's four, with two rounds of CC per turn we decided? Mm -hmm. On a four plus, this character rolls two sets of CC hit dice, hit dice, each at a minus one, and both rolls count. You having any luck over there with that? So the first one, two, three, four, five, six are commons, at least in this pack. And then three uncommons. Okay. You should do me a quick count up of how many rares there are in the set. Okay. That art's cool. It's one thing to say the art in this set is really cool. I do like it. We have Abraham. He's a person who's got two life, five control, zero skills, one weapon, and those are the numbers. When he's in play, add plus one to your leader's attack. Send for all of your other XX characters. I don't know what that rules text means, but that's great. XX was one of those like types that we didn't have to worry about. Okay, but what was what does it mean if you send for all of your others? What? Yeah, exactly. That's rules text. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Sorry, I got distracted because he looks like the guy from um. Oh, uh, what's that movie with Samuel L. Jackson? Pulp Fiction? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. I just want to clarify, you're not saying he looks like Samuel L. Jackson, right? No, he you looks do like think the he other one. John Travolta? Is that who that is? Oh my God. You've met John Travolta. I have. You should know these things. Yeah. Oh, this is a, uh, one of those locations. 
I don't know if this location is going to be a rare then. I don't even know what this location will be called. Because it's got three names. It, there's an there's some acid tunnels, a gymnasium, and an energy core. And I don't know if it's a rare or not. But we'll put it in the rare pile. Alright. Instant. Give me that. Play during your stockpile phase before drawing cards. Freely redistribute your weapons among your characters following normal restrictions. This does not count as arming. We have a weapon. It is a spinning spear. This combatant has plus two diamonds. It looks like 68 range. Okay. That's not too bad, so you're looking at about, hopefully about half from opening a rooster box. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, figure out what that thing's got going on. Uh, you ain't all that, victory condition. Collect two VPs for each combatant you killed in DF. Do not roll your control victory points die for these kills. I think the weapons are some of the coolest cards in this game. Like, they're just... They're like really cool post-apocalyptic style weapons. They just look nice. I th think they're well thought out. Okay, so the, the locations are named... Like, this one is Gymnasium slash Acid Tunnels slash Energy Core. It's just, oh, okay. And is this a rare? Yeah, uh, I didn't even look. <laughs> um, it, it, it says Ooh. it's an X. So it says it's fixed to the starter deck? That's what it nice. says. Alright, we got one of those artifacts. Oh, cool. And Oh, wow. I don't know what the hell's going on there. That looks really weird. So, like, it's, it's so hard to tell, but this is visibly like a sticker on top of the card. <laughs> like, run your hand over it, like... Oh, what like there's the a heck? there's like a ridge there, like it's it's hard to show, but there is like there is a slight ridge between the card and the shiny foil bit. <laughs> I that's so, and like, it's so hard to see the artwork because it's it has the, this weird. It's really dark from some some angles, and then really like sparkly from others. I love it. I'm confused by it. <laughs> so it's a supply. This is the Artifact Digger Bot. Play before the game starts. Add one to your total victory points needed to win. If your supply roll is a one, you may immediately re-roll it. You may lose this use this ability once per turn. That seems good. Huh. Well, it did say the artifacts were things that didn't go in your deck. They started in play, so... Yeah. I guess the fact that it's visibly thicker isn't really an issue. Yeah, they can be as shiny and fancy and stickery as they want. I think the crow had that as well, right? Where the weird, the chase cards were weird effects that you played. Yeah. Before the game. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, the like sketch cards from the comic. Yeah. We have. The Psychotic Intern Supply. Costs 5 supply. Discard this card after a combat in which you lost a control 3 or less combatant. Return that character to play with one life remaining. His weapons and skills are still discarded. Hmm. Well, that sounds like combat damage doesn't go away. Wounds. Right, because they come back with one life remaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool, then. Was that, uh, the, the card right before kind of looked like the suit of armor from Full Metal Alchemist a little bit? I haven't seen that. What? <laughs> That's quite funny. Oh, my. I think I have that notebook. <laughs> I, like, I literally, I have a notebook that yeah, the cover is a circuit board. <laughs> Alright, we have a weapon, we have a death disc! 
Oh my. Uh, if if this character is not a combatant, spend one supply or discard the disc to fire a DF shot into combat before the combat pools roll for DF. This shot hits on a nine and may only be used once per combat. Hmm. She just basically a grenade that you just chuck at somebody. But it keeps coming back because you get to use it once per combat. I don't know if I want my grenades to do that. <laughs> There's Sarah Connor from Terminator 2. Yeah, alright. That's creepy. Which one? Yeah. The eye? Yeah. She's got an eye tattooed on her hand. It's, it's like the thing from Pan's Labyrinth. With... I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there's some uh, pool balls that are set to blow up. There's the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. And Hypnotism. Instead of rolling your DF dice, you may make a task roll. On a 5+, plus, your opponent's lowest control competent is removed from combat. What a weird art. You hypnotize them and you make them leave combat. Yeah, but the art... It, it does seem very close up. I think the, all the victory condition ones look kind of cool with the different, like, open windows and stuff to show different heads. <laughs> There's a warhead leader. Oh, he's a new leader. He is. He has a one max draft, two attack, and one defend. If your draft roll is a 1, you may immediately re-roll it. You may use this ability once per turn. Cool. Yeah. Oh, there's her. That's cool artwork. <laughs> That's also cool, but very different artwork. You had that guy in play. Attack wasps. Uh, victory dance. Collect one VP for sacking a location that hasn't been sacked yet, in addition to the VPs you would normally collect. Cool. This is very weird here. Instant. Once more into the prey. Free. <laughs> Free. Oh, I mean, come on. Play at the start of your action phase. You may launch two separate attacks this turn. Any character who participates in the first combat cannot participate in the second. There's no way I want to do two attacks in one turn. Right? <laughs> it's like 60 steps. Okay. Training. Add nine rectangles and nine hexagons to this character's combat string. You can lock it up. We still won't know what it means. Rectangles means add hits in CC. Yeah. And what are hexagons mean? Hexagons aren't on this. Nice. <laughs> Can't touch this. Nah, 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 nah. They killed Robocop. Oh no. <laughs> MC Hammer killed Robocop. Okay, so if this one. So look up Killing Grounds War Shelter Sewage Plant and see if that's a. a rare card or not. And if it's not, look up Mesh Armor. Uh, it's an X. Okay, look, what's Mesh Armor? A U. How can that be an X though? Because it wasn't. If it wasn't in the starter decks. It's not the one you had, was it? Mm, also, if X so. just means fixed to the starter deck, how can. How can we be getting stuff in the pack that is fixed to the starter deck? I don't have any idea. Uh, I mean, I guess, like, Scry Magazine's doing their best, but. I know they. I read a. Short excerpt, and while when one of the guys said there was some card games that they just 
knew that they didn't get every card for, but just physically couldn't do any more research. And there's a lot of games out there. Yeah, instant saboteurs. Play during your action phase, look at an opponent's hand, and discard any one of that player's non-character cards. Cool. So I don't know if we've got any good cards or not, other than our little robot man. I do like robot man. X Octic. It's a person who has a lot of numbers. <laughs> and when fighting in a combat pool that contains a white reaver, it gains some more numbers. A Who knows what a white reaver is? Is White Reaver a card or is it a uh, well, there's a White Reaver Leader card. Okay. But that's it. Mm. Hunter, at any time you may pay one leadership and one supply to draw a card. That seems okay. White Reavers are... A class type. Okay. She's an SG, what's that? What does that stand for? Scar Gang. And this is Acid Rain. Play before a round of CC. Make a task roll for every character in play. On a 3+, plus, that character loses a weapon. It's Star-Lord. Yeah. It, it is, in fact, Star-Lord. I've seen this guy quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Manhattan. Oh from yeah. Watchmen. Slightly less blue. A lot less blue. And with a hole in his head, apart from instead of just a drawing. Rally round the carcass. <laughs> if the attack pool was outnumbered by the defense pool, collect two victory points for every combat and killed during this combat. Do not roll your control victory points for kills in this combat. We never got to any point that told us what to do with history cards. Ever. In our foot. Like, we read a lot of that rulebook and it never mentioned victory cards. So who knows? You could play them during combat. I did read that. Okay. I don't know uh, what, but. Blood Ritual. Okay. With Zoro, maybe? Kind sure. of? Sure. Play before the DF hit dice are rolled. Tar target Hoodoo. Target Hoodoo Combatant rolls an extra set of CC hit dice in the first round of CC and no CC hit dice in the second round. Hoodoo was a... Uh... Yeah, it says HD on it, so I... I figured that much. I, I made that link. Right, proud of you. Yeah. Flamethrower! Nice. Use at the beginning of any DF round. All of this character's DF hits affect your opponent's entire combat pool. Discard after use. Cool. It's got, it's got a little fuel canister on the side. I think that's maybe relevant to something in the rule somewhere. Yeah. There's a lot of symbols on these cards that have, uh, presumably have some sort of relevance somewhere. Way That guy's getting punched in the face. Yeah, he is. Uh, this is an imposter. Instant, that's a lot of text. Play immediately after an opponent makes a draft roll. Instead of getting the character he rolled for, the player gets the next available character from his stockpile. The original target is discarded, and the stockpile, including all cards found while looking for the next character, is reshuffled. Okay. Feels like it could go really badly for you. Yeah. Uh, Prudence. No Clover cards can be played in Prudence's CC matchup by either player. It says Prudence is worth one dollar. Nice. What's the most expensive card in this? I don't set? know, I was just wondering. I'm guessing it's going to be the five chases, but other than those. 
Well, those are five dollars each. So. Nice. We have lock out an instant. Play during your action phase. Name any location that you control. That location can't be attacked until after your next action phase. Ooh, Any kind of two dollar rares. A couple of two dollar rares, okay. That's it. I wonder if I go on eBay if people will uh, go by these prices. <laughs> Just be like, hey, I have Scar's official price guide here. <laughs> Flash grenades. That's a two dollar rare. Is it? <laughs> Looks like it's made with light bulbs. <laughs> They're cute. To use make a task roll during the first round of CC instead of rolling your hit dice on a three plus this character's matchup opponent rolls no hit or block dice in the second round of CC. On a roll of one this character rolls no hit or block dice in the second round of CC. Discard after use. Bang. So you throw it and if you don't throw it far enough it blows up in your face. Oops. What are the promo cards worth? They were on the first page. Uh, meet the charge. Play when an opponent declares an attack location. Add at least one character to your defense pool to move combat into the open. Uh, one is worth five and one is worth two. Is it the artifact that's worth five? Yeah. But that's because it's shiny. <laughs> there's, a, there's a weird shiny sticker on it. <laughs> Sucks to be you. I think we've seen this one already. I think so. Yeah. The first ever, one of the first ever tests for magic foils were basically like that. It was like a sticker stuck on the artwork and it was of dragon whelp, I think. And it was one of those ones where it wasn't lenticular, but it's when you like tilted the artwork, the picture was 3D and it was in like the greeny orangey colors. You know what I'm talking about? Hopefully the people watching the video know what I'm talking about too. Why don't we have one of those? Because they made three test copies, and I think all three of them are with well-known collectors. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, instant. That thing is huge! <laughs> Thanks. Play when you form an attack pool with at least one warhead in it. Your opponent's defense send is reduced by one. <laughs> You're just looking at whether things are one or two dollar rares. Yeah. Spoiler, we didn't make our money back, <laughs> considering what I paid for this box. Red. In DF, Red gets a 7-Eleven. <laughs> okay. A whole store. Yeah. Here to go. Yep. There's the cool gun again. Those are cool grenades. Political bribes. Collect one victory point if your opponent's next sub resource is five or greater. If he chooses not to roll his resource dice, or he rolls a four or less on his sub dice, you get nothing. Okay. I like how all the rules text assumes that only men play this game. Which That's for, how they made card games in the 90s. Which is, uh, I think, a bit ambitious for them, considering no one's playing this <laughs> game. I think they'd be really happy to have some men playing this game. Or some women, or anyone. Oh, and there's political bribes again. Two, same round in a row. Right after, no way, Jose. Which is the same artwork. Yep. That's just awkward. Well, I think... All of I think it's the same eight faces behind different things. It's just different ones are open. I think. So right. So there's him. I. This is. Yeah. So see. So like these two, we have rally around the carcass, and I hear good things. But this guy in the top is the same. Okay, but and, that those two have the same people showing. Right, it's that's a bit weird, but it's just I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe they weren't supposed to do that, but they did it anyway. Whoops. Whoops indeed. Alright, so we got one fancy little shiny robot man. I love him. 
and we got some other cards that may or may not do things in the game. We could find out. Nope. Oh. <laughs> all right, so that was a box. Yay. All right, that is all of the opening done. So let's go through the different aspects of the game and see what we thought. Starting with gameplay, obviously we didn't quite get there coming straight out of the box. But from looking online, the simplified rules that people have posted, it is going to be a lot easier to get into if you're really wanting to do that. Unlike Annie Mayhem, the game did at least make me want to go and look up the additional rules in order to try and play, rather than just it being so terrible I didn't want to do it. The layout and the artwork and the look of the cards I absolutely loved. I think they're fantastic. I especially love all of the different creative weaponry that's in the game. It's just great. This is a game I might try and put a set together for just because of the artwork. And I really loved the one artifact card that we saw. It had a very unique, interesting foil. Of course, talking about putting together a set brings me on to the secondary market. It isn't really there. eBay doesn't seem to have any shortage of sealed product, whether it's full boosters, the starter decks, or just loose boosters. There's enough of it on there. But as for single cards, it's very occasionally that some rares are up there, maybe a small lot that you can look through to see if you need ones, and the Clergy Anne promo pops up from time to time. But as I said earlier, you can't even find pictures of certain cards. If you're trying to put together a regular set, most of it is just going to be buying boosters and hoping, putting together the majority of the set from a couple of booster boxes, and then just waiting. And waiting for however long it takes, unfortunately. And if you're looking to add the promos to your collection, it seems like you're going to have to be very, very lucky to find that second one. All in all, I do like this game, but that is mainly just down to the artwork, and I am hoping to be able to pick up some more for myself pretty soon. And with that, I think we will leave it there for the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you guys have played the game before, seen it before, or if this was your first time seeing it and you just really enjoyed it. And please especially leave me a comment if you have any pictures or information on that secondary promo card, whether it's Energy Bot or Efficiency Bot. And be sure to join me next time when we are taking a look at Eve, the second Genesis. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Check out some more videos right here. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content from DJ Gigabyte. Gotta, Gotta catch, catch them all! all. <laughs>